Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to Civil Engineering Academy. My name's Cody. Let's go ahead and get started. All right, so today we have a structural mechanics problem. We're going to be talking a little bit about shear. Here's what the question says. Uh, using the figure below, at what point along the beam is shear zero? We see that x equals zero at our pin support, and then we kind of have this distributed load, seven kips per foot, all the way to the end. It looks like that's five feet. Then we have a roller at the three foot mark, and x starts from the left side and goes to the right. All right, so uh, the step to the first step to this guy is understanding what to find in the manual. If you're looking in the FE reference handbook, this could be an FE or a PE problem. It's good to know both. Uh, make sure you've got the latest and greatest manual or handbook. It's gonna be version 10.2 for the FE. We would need to be looking on page 135. All right, that's where the goodies are at. The PE reference handbook, same thing here. Make sure you have the latest and greatest document. It's version 1.2, and this is going to be on page 31. All right, find some goodies there. Um, and the key word to this is shear. So in the problem, it basically says what, at what point along this beam is shear zero. Uh, I searched uh, shear and ended up finding something on it. So um, it's just understanding, you know, do you remember this from school? We went over this in school, um, and it's just a refresher more than anything. So what we need to do is we need to solve for our unknown reactions. So what we need to do, this guy has, remember, pins. Uh, we're going to call this A. I'm going to call this point A. That's got an A force and a Y force, uh, or an X force, sorry. going to have a Y force and an X force. This X force is actually going to be zero because we don't have anything along the X axis, no force along the X axis that's going to contribute to that pin support. All right. So the pin support's just holding it there. Now the roller, the roller only has a Y support. I'm going to call this BY. So just throwing the letters out there, to be honest with you, there's no thought behind it. It's just A and B. So that's the thought behind that. That's going to be reaction BY. And so now what we need to do is solve for AY and BY. And the way that we can do that is by um, finding the moment. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go sum of moments about point A. Okay, so I'm just going to take it about this point. I'm going to use the right hand rule and say that counterclockwise is going to be positive. So if you're riding with your right hand, your hand naturally curls in the counterclockwise position or rotation. Uh, that is what I'm going to use as my... Uh, standard here for positive and negative. So you can make it the other way if you want. You'll get the same answer if you do it right. Uh, this guy is going to be equal to zero. We don't want any rotation on this. And so our first step is finding a concentrated load. And so we have that distributed load, but we need to convert it to a concentrated load. So we need to go seven kips per foot. That is going to be times the distance of the distribution. So that's going to be three plus two. Feet, right? So it's spread out over five feet. This is 35 kips, right? And so for this moment calculation, what we need to do is assume that it happens at the midpoint, which would be 2.5 feet from this zero, the x equals zero mark. This is 2.5 feet, right? Cool. So let's continue. Let's say that this is going to be a negative because it's going against our positive moment. So it's a negative moment it's pushing against our hand or counterclockwise rotation. Remember, we were wanting this to be a positive, right? So it's going against that. It's going to be a negative moment. This is going to be 35 kips. Remember, we, uh, we took it about the midpoint of the distribution, which is going to be two and a half feet from point A. Right, and so we need to add in the uh, by moment, and so that is three feet from that left uh, side there. I'm going to call this by times three feet. Now we did assume a positive uh, force on by, and so that's why it's a positive moment. It's going with our positive rotation. Okay, so solving for by, whenever you end up solving for it, you end up with 29.17 kips. All right, so we're going to use that later here in a minute. Uh, we need to go ahead and do the sum of forces about the y-axis. So remember, we have three equations of equilibrium. We have uh, the sum of moments, the sum of forces in the y, and the sum of forces in the x. The only way that we can solve for the uh, y-force in the, at point A is going to be if we use the sum of forces about the y. Okay, So that's what we're going to do. This guy is going to be zero. We don't want it floating in the air. 
uh, this is going to be equal to a y so we just add in our uh, y forces now we've got a negative 35 kips acting down now we need to add in our by that's 29.17 kips remember this if i can do this there we go this is by okay all right so when we solve for a y using this equilibrium equation this is going to be 5.8 three kips all right so now we solve for our reaction forces you're taking the fe you're probably going to have to do that including the pe honestly pe it's kind of an expectation but the fe you may be asked to solve for the force at by or something like that or ay even it's good practice practice it up get good at it all right so now what we're going to do is draw our shear diagram now i'm going to go ahead and scoot this page down just a little bit i'm going to do my best to kind of draw this in line let's see that's pretty close. That is close. We're getting kind of messy, but hopefully this will make sense here in a minute. I'm going to draw my shear diagram from this point all the way over to that point. This is shear of X. Right? Okay, so scooting up, we have this A force that's pushing up. Very first thing that happens to this beam that it gets pushed in the positive y direction and so this guy is 5.83 kips all right and then we have that distributed load going down seven kips per foot so that tells me that every foot it's going down seven kips at a constant rate and so our slope is just going to be a straight line now what we can do is uh you can solve for minus 7x times 3 and that will get you your uh, your um, I guess finish line I guess uh, your your Y your new Y remember we're starting at 5.83 you need to calculate that back and so this guy is going to be minus 15.17 kips so I'm going to draw a straight line let's see if I can do this all right so this guy right here is going to be uh, minus 7 kips that's going to be your slope that line okay all right, so now remember that we have a BY, and that BY happens to be 29.17. And so that's going to bump us up right there. Ah, not a straight line, but it's close enough. Uh, this is going to be 14 kips. That's where that point's going to be. And then it goes down seven, or 7 kips per foot for 2 feet, and so we end up at 0. Cool. How about that? All right, so this guy ends up at zero, and so notice this guy right here is our roller. All right, and then this is what we're solving for. This, or this, or this, or this. I could ask you for any of them. You know, you could have zero, you could have five, you could have where that roller is, three feet, because it technically does go to zero. But notice those aren't really our answers. And so we need to solve for this one right here, this guy. So let's go ahead and do it. And here is what our uh, equation of the line is going to be. It's y equals mx plus b. That's the sort of uh, function that I'm going to use, the standard. And this is going to be y. So shear, remember our shear is along our y-axis, is equal to the slope. Remember our slope is 7 x so minus 7 x not 7 it's minus 7 x it's going down at a constant rate 7 kips per foot where our slope comes in and we start out at 5.83 uh, kips I'm not going to add the kips at the end uh, we know what our units are it's just going to confuse us if we add that k in there it could be that unknown factor like x is so uh, what we're going to do is whenever y equals 0 what is our x? So we're going to go ahead and do that. Whenever y equals 0, we have minus 7x plus 5.83. Whenever you solve for x, it ends up looking something like 0 0.83. And uh, this is going to be feet. So again, they could ask you for you know x equals 0. Uh, they could ask you for all the points being 0. So this would be uh, 0 0.83 x. This would be, I think it was 3, x equals 3. This would be x equals 5. All of them are feet. All right. And so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to scroll up 
And so it looks like our answer for this one's going to be A. All right, so I hope this video helps. Hope it clears some things up. We'll see you next time.